This is the new Dell Precision 5690 and the spec I have today is £6,500 with the graphics option alone costing almost £2,500. I'll be doing a full review including gaming performance with its top of the range GPU and answering that question on whether you should avoid it, shortlist it or go ahead and buy it. First off unboxing. In the back of the box we have a 3 pin to UK plug cable and inside this other box we have the laptop itself which we will put to a side and underneath we have the 165 watt power adapter and a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Onto the design, very typical Dell if you're familiar with their laptops, you've got a logo on the lid and the colour is a metallic grey. For those of you who are familiar with Apple Space Grey, the colour looks close to that. In the light you can see a glittery shimmer. It's made from aluminium so it has a premium feel to it and it feels very solid. Underneath you have the model number here. We have raised legs or rather bumps with rubber feet and this huge vent here and some exhaust vents on the back which will help with cooling. On the inside, it's not one finger opening. Let's peel off this cover. This is finished in a matte black. It's got a bit of a rubber texture. All of the Dell Precision range have a minimalistic look. You don't get any indication that it's a £6,500 laptop other than the processor sticker here. I did prefer the carbon that they had in an older generation which I reviewed last year. Given the cost of this laptop it would have been nice to have that reintroduced back into this model range. The full specification of the laptop we have here today is in the description down below. The display in this review model is a 16 inch OLED touch with a 4K screen. It has a 408 brightness level which is good enough to work in an office environment. There is a tiny bezel running around the outside. The screen is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it has a screen resolution of 3840 by 2400 at 60 hertz. That ratio allows you to fit more on your screen. And with its 100% DCI-P3 palette, the people who this laptop is aimed at, so your content creators, graphic designers, architects will be happy with the quality and accuracy. If it was my money, I would not go for this particular model as it's practically impossible to work at 4K without having a 250% scale. 16 inch is just not big enough in my opinion. But if you're going to work on the laptop alone, then I would consider it. I would go for the non-touch 1920 by 1200 IPS panel. If you plan to work in an office or at home, coupled with a dock and external screens, you can drastically increase your productivity. The quality of the OLED looks great and these 4K YouTube videos really pop and look amazing. The touchscreen aspect of it won't be used often in my opinion because you cannot fold it into a tablet and it leaves fingerprints behind being a glossy screen. Now I did review a 5680 earlier this year with a non-touch 1920 by 1200 screen and I will leave a link to that at the end of this video if you want to see how that compares. We have Intel's new range of processors, the Intel Core Ultra range, and this has the Ultra 7 165H V Pro. It has a 24 megabyte cache, 16 cores, 22 threads, and runs up to five gigahertz on turbo. So this will crunch pretty much anything you throw at it. You can select from an Ultra 5 and Ultra 9 processor. In my opinion, if you're paying these premiums, then opting for the Ultra 5 is a mistake. Although, I'm sure it won't be no slouch with its 14 cores. I will be showing you benchmarks a little later to see how this processor performs. You can configure up to 64GB of DDR5 memory running at an impressive 7467 MTS. And this laptop has exactly that amount. So why would you need that much memory? It is application dependent. So when you're buying, just ensure you get the recommended requirements of the application you intend to use mostly. Content creators who do 4K video editing will need a minimum of 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte if your budget stretches. Onto storage, you can select from a 256 gigabyte M2 NVMe SSD up to four terabytes. You have one additional storage slot, which you can add from a 256 gigabyte to four terabytes of storage. I would recommend at least getting one terabyte if you don't have any external storage devices. I will be opening this laptop later to see what components are upgradable. And if it's anything like the 5680 that I reviewed earlier this year, then it is good news because some of those components can be upgradable. It comes with an Intel Wi-Fi 7. This will ensure you are ready for the new range of Wi-Fi technology. You have a choice of GPUs ranging from an entry level Intel Arc Pro graphics to this 2,369 pound option, the range topping RTX 5000 ADA 
with its 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now those of you who are doing 4K editing or photo editing, the RTX 1000 ADA will be more than good enough. I reviewed the 3591 recently with the RTX 1000 ADA. So check that out at the end of this video if you want to see how that GPU performs. Now if you watch some of my previous videos, you will know that these GPUs are more optimized for the professional applications they use for and not for gaming but they are still very capable. Here we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Now because of the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, the standard 4K resolution cannot be achieved. Instead we have 3840 by 2400 or call it 4K plus. Here we are running at medium settings with DLSS set to performance. We are achieving over 60 FPS even at this resolution. CPU is sat around 20 to 30% usage, so barely being used here. System memory is up at 21 and a half gigabytes out of the total of 64 gigabytes. GPU utilization is almost maxed out here, but it's only sucking four gigabytes of that 16 gigabytes of VRAM. The graphics itself look beautiful, even with these settings, but I can't get over his hair. I mean, what's going on here? That just looks like it's pixelated and not realistic at all. Hopefully increasing the settings will fix that. Dropping down to HD plus and the DLSS set to quality and with ultra settings. At this resolution, the CPU seems to be working harder, just over 30% utilization, but the settings are higher. It's using a similar amount of system memory. GPU memory is at 4.2 gigabytes. Temperatures are around 60 degrees. The FPS is sitting around 70 range, reaching 90 in areas. With a bit of action though, it's dropping into the 60s. These settings have made no difference to his hair, which is still pixelated. On Cyberpunk, right off the bat, we are hitting over 65% CPU utilization. System memory is at over 21 gigabytes. GPU is maxed out and hitting over 64 degrees. Graphics memory is over six and a half gigabyte and almost hitting seven gigabyte. The FPS is between 40 and 60 during this scene. The game is playing smooth and looks great. Turning on frame generation, the CPU is at 30% utilization. System memory remains the same and so does the graphics memory. However, the frames per second has jumped up, reaching up to 78 FPS during this scene. The game is playing a lot smoother. At HD+, it's not using as much VRAM. CPU usage is between 50 and 60% utilization. GPU is not working as hard, hitting 90% utilization. FPS is hitting 90 and dropping to the mid 70s. We could probably turn up the textures, but with it being in quality mode, it's looking so much better. On Call of Duty, we are getting 90 frames per second hitting 107 in areas, which at 4K is impressive. CPU is around 45 to 55% usage. Details look great and it's definitely playable. We're using only 23 gigabytes of system memory and only six gigabytes of GPU memory. GPU usage is hitting 98%, so I don't think we are going to get anything better. Now onto something that I've never demonstrated, is gaming using an external monitor. I'm currently using a Dell 27 inch 1440p display with a refresh rate of 165 hertz. I did review this earlier in the year. Now I'm going to see if we can get up to those frames, which means I'll be dialing the settings down. I've turned on V-Sync here. I'm not getting the desired frames. I'm only managing 110 FPS. CPU hitting 68% usage. We are using around four gigabytes of the graphics memory. With turning V-Sync off, we can use frame gen and hit some wild FPS, over 200 frames in areas. You're not paying for a gaming GPU here, but it's good to know that you can casually play if you wanted to. As standard, you get a 100 watt hour battery, but paying 14 pound extra, you can get a three year warranty, which is a no brainer. I use PC Mark 10 battery benchmark on the modern office profile. I was able to achieve a time of over 11 hours, which is measured by a balance of writing, web browsing and video conferencing tasks, which is separated by short periods of idle. Once you start utilizing that discrete graphics card, the time drastically reduces. This achieved one hour and 40 minutes on the gaming battery test, which is good to know that it will be fine if you demonstrated something in a meeting or even having a gaming session during your lunch hour. They'll quote a starting weight of just over two kilograms, which is around four and a half pounds. The laptop I have here with the 4K touchscreen and the RTX 5000 weighs in at just over 2.3 kilograms or almost five pounds. The power pack added an additional 500 grams, which giving a total of 2.8 kilograms or just over six pounds. Considering it as a touch and the top of the range GPU, this is not heavy at all. Onto connectivity, on the left side, you have a HDMI 2.1 port, a headphone jack, two Thunderbolt 4 ports with power delivery, 
and you can use them to plug into a display port and an optional smart card reader. On the right side, you have a full size SD card slot with optional SD 7.0 Express. This model here does not have that option. You have another USB-C port, which can be used as a display port, and finally a lock slot. As you saw earlier in the video, you were provided with a USB-C to a USB-A adapter. However, it's something you have to remember, and it can be frustrating if you forget it and need to use a USB-A pen drive, for example. If you want a DOS port, then your alternative is the 3000 or 7000 series, which I will provide a link to those videos at the end. It has a standard backlit keyboard, and like the other precision models, the keys have a small amount of travel. It does feel nice and comfortable. Texture-wise, it feels smooth with a matte texture, and is very quiet. Compared to all the other precision models, this model has the largest buttonless mouse pad, with multi-gesture. I really like the larger pad, it makes navigating this a lot easier especially if you don't have a mouse hooked up to it. It's got a full HD 1080p camera with an auto framing option, which makes sure that you're always centered, which is a good function. The downside is that it doesn't have a camera privacy shutter, which these days is not a common theme. You just have to be extra careful if you're up to no good. Although there is a white light that indicates that the camera is on. You have four speakers, two above the keyboard, and two underneath the laptop pointing down. If you have watched some of my other videos, you will know that the recent precision models have some great sound, and this is no exception. It's loud enough to present in a large room, great for watching movies and gaming on. I'll play some royalty free music at 50%. Now 100%. If you are specking this up, then make sure you get the model with the IR camera, which has an express sign-in via Windows Hello, and it's much more easy to sign in with it. It has other great features such as locking if you walk away from your laptop, and also dimming if you look away, saving you battery life. It comes standard with a fingerprint reader. Taking off the bottom is a simple task, just unscrew the 8 screws, and I use a flat plastic interior tool on the smart card reader slot to gently pry it open. They have conveniently labelled the SSD1, and the SSD2, both appear to be accessible, which is good news as you can upgrade them in the future. I am unable to find the memory, it could be under this compartment, but I'm not going to risk breaking anything. However, I do believe they are soldered in, so it cannot be upgraded. You have these big cooling fans here, one for the GPU and one for the CPU, and they are clearly labelled. Here we have the benchmark results, and there are some impressive scores, especially with the GPU. However, I did notice that this latest CPU did underperform when compared to the previous generation of processor. Here is the storage performance results using 3 Max Storage Benchmark and Crystal Disk Mark. You know what this spec costs, but the base model with an i7 processor and 16GB of memory with the RTX 1000 ADA comes in just short of 3000 136 pounds or just over three thousand dollars on the us website it is expensive but i will explain the justification as it's time for the final verdict should you avoid it should you shortlist it or should you go ahead and buy it i would shortlist it six and a half thousand pound is an absurd amount of money but for professionals working within a business environment this laptop is more an investment the independent software vendor certification that all precision ranges have. Many software applications are designed to run reliably. Now those applications define the specification of this laptop. And in this case, the laptop was purchased to be used with 3D scanning software, saving thousands of hours on designing. Hence the reason why this laptop has the top of the range GPU and the memory is maxed out. And that is solely the justification for paying these premium. If you're looking for something not as expensive, then consider watching my review of the 3591 here. It will be great for content creators and designers and is much more cheaper. If this video brought you any value, please consider subscribing. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.